Rose, a spirited 102-year-old woman, was excited to celebrate her birthday with her best friend, Arthur, but found him missing from their nursing home. She fled the facility with her last savings and traveled alone to a new city to find him, but the money ran out in the middle of her trip. The wooden door creaked open and a sliver of sunlight illuminated the stooped figure of 102-year-old Rose as she gingerly stepped into the grocery store. Customers flocked in and as Rose shuffled across the aisles on a wooden cane for support. With trembling hands, she lifted some assorted candy bars and a bottle of water from the shelf and shakily walked toward the checkout. That would be $15, ma'am. The cashier, Mr. Andrews, who was also the store owner, chirped with a smile as he curiously looked down at Rose. $15? That's too much. I don't have that kind of money, she said, and her face sagged with disappointment. Rose reached into the depths of her faded floral purse and searched for the change, only to realize all she had was her last five dollars. I'll just have the bottle of water, please, she sadly said as she extended the coins to the cashier. Thank you, young man, she said again before leaving the store and slumping onto the wooden bench outside. Rose sat on the bench, resisting the tempting scent of croissants wafting from the nearby bakery. Meanwhile, Mr. Andrews, closing his store for the day, noticed her tear-stained face after hours of sitting alone in the snow. Concerned, he approached to inquire about her distress. Is everything all right, Mom? He approached Rose with a compassionate smile. I saw you have been sitting here since afternoon. It's getting late and colder. Are you waiting for someone? Is there something I could do to help you? With red, puffy eyes, Rose gazed at Mr. Andrews, sighing heavily, realizing she was still stranded in the unfamiliar city. Her tears continued to flow, deepening Mr. Andrews' concern. Mom, are you all right? Do you mind telling me why you're crying? He asked, his tone heavy with concern as he sat beside Rose. The grandma snapped away her tears and snorted. I've lived through wars, seen the world change before my eyes. But now, at 102, I'm going to find my beloved, she began. A grave silence settled upon Mr. Andrews as he listened earnestly. Only if I could go back in time and never let them take him rose, clasped her hands tightly as she recounted the fateful incident that jolted her world two days ago. Before we continue, make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and click the notification bell for more amazing stories. On a sunny Tuesday afternoon, Rose entered the nursing home with white tulips and her 102 end birthday cake, eagerly calling out for Arthur. Arthur, where are you? I got flowers and the cake can't wait to blow out the candle and make a wish. Rose chirped out loud. She grew worried when she didn't see her best friend, 96-year-old Arthur, waiting for her on his usual spot, the wooden bench on the patio overlooking the main gate. Every day after her hospital visits, Arthur greeted Rose with hand-picked lilies, but this time he was absent. Searching the garden, Rose's heart raced with worry. Unable to find him, she approached the doctors, desperate for answers about Arthur's whereabouts. Oh dear, Miss Rose, didn't you know? One of the doctors said sympathetically. A family came for him a couple of hours ago. While you were at the hospital, they took Arthur with them. Took him? Rose questioned with a start. What do you mean they took him? Miss Rose. Arthur is no longer listed as a patient here, replied the doctor. We know this is upsetting, but Arthur is now in the care of his family. He's not going to come back. Rose's grief overwhelmed her as she retreated to her room, haunted by memories of Arthur. The scent of lilies and the familiar melody of just the two of us filled the air, intensifying her sorrow. Regret consumed her as she remembered missed opportunities to confess her love. 
Despite their deep connection, Rose had never found the courage to express her feelings to Arthur. Now, facing the possibility of losing him, she felt the weight of her unspoken love. As tears streamed down her cheeks, Rose discovered a note written in Arthur's handwriting, stirring hope in her heart. Dear Rose, I didn't want to leave you, but nobody informed me my family would come and take me with them today. Maybe we'll meet on the other side, but don't hold your breath. Write letters to this address, Maple Avenue, Springfield, via 7. Oh dear, where's the rest of his address? Rose grew unsettled. As she scanned the message again, she couldn't help but notice the delicate trail of tears smudging the last digits of Arthur's house number. Determined to defy separation from Arthur, Rose devised a plan using the matchbox and candles as her tools. Despite financial constraints, she set her plan in motion, triggering chaos at the facility and slipping away with $30 and her inhaler. Boarding a bus to Springfield, she eagerly anticipated their reunion, despite the journey's uncertainties. Exhausted but determined, Rose's mind was filled with memories of Arthur's promises as she endured the long, uncomfortable journey. Awoken by the driver upon arrival in Springfield, she stepped into the cold air, scanning the unfamiliar surroundings with a shiver. Is this Springfield? But why is this town so quiet? Rose raised an eyebrow as she scanned the region as far as her eyes could see. Everything around seemed bleak. Rose looked at her bus ticket, which mentioned Springfield in bold. Her instincts told her something had gone wrong when she saw Missouri instead of Virginia. Excuse me, is this Springfield? Can you please tell me how to get to this address? Rose approached one of the bus drivers at the station and showed him the address on Arthur's note. Yes, this is Springfield, Missouri. But wait a minute, lady. Looks like a mistake here. The Springfield mentioned on this address is in Virginia. Did you get down at the wrong stop or something? The driver replied. Disappointment washed over Rose like a tidal wave. She had exhausted her last bit of savings on a ticket to the wrong city, and the very thought of it consumed her. Oh, boy. I should have checked the ticket before getting on the bus. Is there any way to get to Virginia from here? Rose looked up at the driver and asked with a glimmer of desperation. But her hopes were dashed when the driver told her that she needed to get to Los Angeles if she wanted to catch a bus to Virginia. Disappointed and penniless, Rose's desperate attempts for help led her to fake a heart attack for a free ambulance ride to Los Angeles. Escaping the hospital, she struggled in an unfamiliar city, hungry and with only a dollar. Mr. Andrews, touched by her story, offered her assistance, providing food and a ride to Springfield. Together, they embarked on a journey filled with hope and anticipation. Upon arrival, they began their search for Arthur, guided by Rose's intuition and a shared song. Their reunion was tearful and joyous, culminating in a wedding celebration full of love and promises for their remaining days. Thanks for tuning in to Spread Channel. Until next time, keep your imagination soaring.